Welcome to the Lamar Woodley Show. I'm your host, Oscar the Grouch. Here celebrating Halloween and also have a lot to celebrate our big win on Sunday. But I brought my teammate in, Stevenson Sylvester, number 55 linebacker. Got his first start against the New England Patriots. You know, how do you feel coming off your first start? Oh, man, I feel amazing. Um, every time you get to play a team like the Patriots, man, you just feel good, especially come out with, with a win and hold that team to under 200 yards is, uh, is amazing. So I think our defense did a great job on Sunday. Well, you know, all week, the, you know, the newspapers and the New England Patriots haven't given us any respect, you know, based on the past history of the Pittsburgh still against the, you know, against Tom Brady. Did you have an opportunity to get in there and hit him or, you know, make any big splash plays in there? No, I didn't. I didn't. You know, we had a lot of packages going in and out and, uh, you know, we were trying to defend the pass a lot. So, you know, I didn't get to have as much pressure on them as I'd like to. But, you know, we, we played so good against them, you know, uh, with you and, and uh, all the other guys, Kiesel and everybody else putting pressure on them. All we had to do was lock down the coverage and uh, we did a great job on you. Well, you know, me being in the meeting room, I know that you're one of our big special teams players, and now you're, you're asked to go into that starting role. Are you a little nervous, you know, maybe going in this week into that Baltimore game? No, no, no. And, you know, what I've learned in the past is uh, the nervous you get, the more worried you are and uh, the more likely you are to mess up. So, you know, I got to take my deep breaths and just handle it. And, you know, like Mike Tomlin told me last week, it's just like you were in college. So I got to go out there and have fun. So I, want you to, I also want you to tell everybody, you know, Talk about me a little bit in the meeting room. Tell everybody what such a good player I am, good person I am, you know. Lift me up a little bit. Lamar's great. <laughs> was he rolling? How was that? <laughs> well, you know, coming off the big win Sunday against New England Patriots, nobody was giving us any respect at all. Um, it was just Tom Brady against the Pittsburgh Steelers and, you know, us losing all these the previous years, going back to 2001, the Pittsburgh Steelers losing, losing an AFC Championship game. And, Nobody was giving us any respect because they're saying, well, we're an old, tired defense. And I know me and a lot of guys on the team definitely had chips on their shoulders. We wanted to go out there and we wanted to prove everybody wrong. We wanted to continue to go in there and stack wins. And I think we went in there and did that on Sunday, you know, going in there, hitting Tom Brady, you know, shutting down the pass and shutting down the run. And uh, we, we, came out, we came out big on Sunday. And you being a young guy and having an opportunity to start, I think that you played a major role out there, not only playing special teams, but stepping into that starting role of a, a big captain on our team, James Ferrier. Um, and I think that we're going to continue to get better each and every week uh, for the rest of the season. You know, coming into this week into the game, you know that James Ferrier had went down. You know, he had strained his calf muscle. You know, how was it throughout the whole week, you know, as far as preparation for you, as far as getting ready for the big game on Sunday? Uh, preparation, it, it stepped up a little bit, but you know, um, you know, my preparation and what uh, Coach Butler and Coach LeBeau has always told me is to be ready at all times. So I'm learning all four positions and uh, whenever somebody goes down, as you know, James Harrison went down a couple weeks ago, so we had to have somebody step in. So, you know, injuries are a part of the game, so you got to be ready anytime like that. And, you know, I was, I was really up in my playbook, so, you know, I didn't have to transition that much and learning more. But um, I did have to step it up a little bit in the film room. And, you know, I didn't know if James was going to be out or in. You know, he's a tough guy. So he might have came back some, uh, on Saturday or Sunday. But um, he told me on Saturday he wasn't going to be able to go. So I, I had to start a job. You know, what do you think the, the biggest part about being that, you know, filling that linebacker role? You know, you got a guy like, you know, James Ferry, who's been around this league for a long time, who's been leading this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, you know, how was it filling that role? Like, you know, what is the responsibility of a middle linebacker? I think the main responsibility is toughness. I mean, you got to be sure of yourself out there. You, you are the interior of that, of that defense. And, you know, you get the calls. The calls come in from the linebackers. And everything is run, I feel like, through the linebacker. So you got to be tough and you got to be sure of yourself. Now, sometimes when we're out there on the field, <laughs> you know, the crowd, the crowd is loud, yelling. And Tom Brady is getting to the line of scrimmage. You know, you know. Can you can you tell the people out there, as far as making the play call? How do you get that to each one of the guys out there on the football field? It's hard, and you know, early in the game on Sunday, I feel like we had uh, had a couple plays where we missed that. And uh, you know, uh, all the front seven, the D linemen and the linebackers were on the same page, and then some of the secondary weren't. But you know, we're a talented defense, so we were able to uh, make up for that. But um, it's hard, and you know, especially with Steeler Nation yelling out there like they do each and every week, making it hard for offenses to operate. 
it was tough to get that communication. But, you know, we, we ended up fitting it up right, and Tom Brady had three plays in the first quarter. So uh, I felt like we did a pretty good job with it. Now this week, we got Baltimore coming in town. You know what they did to us in the, the first game, you know, the first week. Um, you know, what's your preparations going into this week, you know, not knowing that James Ferrier is going to be back? You know, so what steps are you taking this week to prepare to become a starter this week? Same steps I've been taking each and every week, you know, just uh, making sure I know my stuff. Any play call that Coach LeBeau calls, he could call one that he hasn't called in a couple weeks, and we got to know it like that. You know, people like like James Ferrier know the defense, and know, know every call, every everything that's been run in the last eight years. So uh, I have to make up for that and, and know exactly all the calls like Ryan Clark be making and Troy makes. So uh, just be ready, if it's ready for every situation because, you know, Baltimore is going to come with it and they're going to be hyped to play on Sunday night. You know, I know you're new to the rival, you know, but, you know, being a young guy, how big is this rivalry for you, you know, personally, you know, as a football player and also as a middle linebacker? Oh, man, it stepped up. You know, it's like in college where you have all the big rivalries. I mean, you had the Michigan-Ohio State. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had the Utah-BYU rivalry. It's pretty tough. But, um, you know, I don't think there's nothing like the Steelers-Ravens rivalry. I mean, it's just so heated and intense, and all the outside people just get so involved in it. And it's just an awesome atmosphere because, you know, you feel it from both teams, and especially when it's on prime time, it's one of the best <laughs> games of the year. So how do you feel about the rivalry? Uh, I feel it's, it's a big rivalry. You know, I've been in this rivalry for five years now, but, you know, me being that I was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan for many years, I know how big this rivalry is. You know, their defense and our defense is usually the top defenses in the league each and every year. So, you know, it's going to be a physical game, and it's which defense is going to step up. And I think going back, looking at that first game, you know, Baltimore really stepped up, you know, not only running the ball on our defense, also passing the ball. You know, we didn't step up as a defense. But since that week, we've been getting better and better each and every week. And I feel like, you know, we're right where we want to be. We're stacking wins. We're coming off a big win, big win Sunday against the Patriots and when everybody was counting us out and everybody's still counting us out. But this is going to be a big game on Sunday. We have an opportunity to play in Heinz Field in front of a, a great crowd. You know, 8 o'clock game. Everybody's going to be watching. It's a primetime game. You know, so... I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up for this game because it's, it's another opportunity for us to continue to stack wins because we're trying to play in February and play in the Super Bowl in Indianapolis. What I want to do right now, I want to go trick or treat and I want to scare some kids, so I got to put my other outfit on to scare some kids. You're watching the Lamar Woodley Show on Wolf City TV. Happy Halloween. Who are you supposed to be? He's not. Thank you. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got so scared. I got so scared. That one. I didn't get scared. Bro. Welcome back to the Lamar Woodley Show. I know the big question out there everybody wants to ask me is, am I going to be back on the game Sunday? Because I left out of the game with a minor injury. Um, hamstring injury, but my goal is to be out there on Sunday and be with my teammates against the against the Ravens. I, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't miss this game for the world, you know. But my goal is to be out there and playing in this football game. Oh yeah, the fans got some more questions for you, so I, I, I picked this up. <laughs> I thought I'd ask you. Brett Kostoff says, "Who talks the most trash in the NFL, or who have you had the most words with in the NFL?" Oh, by far, I think Larry Foot. Uh, number 50, the linebacker on the team, is definitely a big trash talker. And, and going back, you know, before him had to be uh, Joey Porter. You know, I, I go on YouTube sometimes and I look at clips of Joey Porter just going out there, you know, just, just trash talking. I look forward to it. And I thought he was going to do it when we played, uh, played him in Arizona, but he didn't do it. I guess the players on the Steelers scene don't even listen to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another question is uh, from Anonymous is, what do you have to say about all the dollars? Any particular shout outs to some of these younger guys stepping in and stepping up? Uh, you know, doubt is going to be there. You know, people are always going to be talking bad about you, whether you're winning or whether, you, whether you're losing. You know, always going to be finding something to talk about. You know, so we just, like Coach LeBeau said, we, hear, we heard the wind blow before. So pretty much it go in one ear and out the other. You know, from all the TV announcers putting this down, team is getting old, um, a lot of injuries on the team. You know, we lost against Baltimore, wasn't going to beat the Patriots. And, um, all I can say is we continue to improve each and every week. And at the end of the year, the way we judge ourselves and the way that we prove everybody wrong is going out there 
and getting that trophy at the end of the year in February, which is Indianapolis. Steven Smith also asked, uh, Lamar, what do you think was the biggest thing leading you to get pressure on Brady? Was it the press man coverage or was it the strong D-line play allowing you to get to the gaps in Brady's face? I mean, I think it's the, it's the, the press from everybody. You know, you're only as good as the people that surround you. I think the secondary did an excellent job. Ike Taylor did an excellent job against Wes Walker. Um, Ziggy Hood put pressure up the middle. Brett Kiesel, the linebackers, everybody was on their man, man to man, and didn't allow anybody to get open, which allowed the outside linebackers like me and Lawrence Timmons to come off the edge and put pressure on Brady because he can't step in the pocket. You know, once a quarterback like Tom Brady gets to moving around, he gets nervous a little bit. And by him not allowing him to step into the pocket because you have Ziggy Hood and Casey Hampton and pushing it, that gives me enough time to come off the edge and sack him a little bit. And um, that's what we did on Sunday. Uh, here's a question you like uh, from Jamie Buster. He said, what's your greatest Michigan Wolverine football memory? Greatest Michigan football memory. Um, had to be against Notre Dame. Um, it was another big game like we had on on Sundays against the Patriots. Everybody was counting the Michigan Wolverines out and said that this was gonna be a big challenge for us. And we went down there in South Bend and we blew them out. I think the score was 47 to 13. And by far the biggest play, and probably my, my only play of the day, um, one of our players went in there and caused a forced fumble, and I picked it up and ran it all the way in for a 50-yard touchdown. And uh, <laughs> that was my celebration at the end. All right, this is one, a question that I also want to know. Uh, it's from Chris Garman. He wants to know, what's the story behind the karate kick? The story behind the karate kick. I mean, you know, you, ha you have all these celebrations. You have Joey Porter with the stump, Larry Foote with his, with his stump. So I was just sitting at home, and I was kind of thinking, what can I come up with? You know, so I need something. And I thought about one time, usually when you're trying to get into a door and it's hard to get in, what do you do? You kick it. Nice. So, you know, that was my thing, kicking in the door, saying, let me in, and I'm in here now. Nice, nice. One last question is from uh, Christian Garcia. She, uh, he goes, how does the Steeler Nation atmosphere feel when you're playing on the field? Does it feel you to make more plays? Uh, it's, it's definitely a great feeling when the Steeler Nation is out there. It's almost like having a, a 12th person out there on the football field because by the fans being so loud, you know, it's hard for the offense to really hear, you know, what's going on. So it caused confusion, caused players to jump off sides, you know, some missed assignments. So it allows the defense to go out there and make some big plays. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Blazer Capital Management, for allowing us to come through, pass out some candy, scare some kids. And I'd also like to thank my teammate, Sly, for coming through, talking a little football. And I also have a special giveaway, the September edition of Sports Illustrated of me on the front cover. You're watching the Lamar Willis Show on Wool City TV. Everybody get on line with Lamar Willis. Gotta jump them out so you need to be watching. Gotta jump them out so you need to be listening. Any out on the field, they be putting in the work. First quarter, gotta set it off. All my Twitter fans, let me see you tweet it out. Tell them how you feel. Anything you wanna talk about. It's like a holler. I'm Lamar Woodley. I uh, brought some of my teammates out today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves when we start after I start talking. Uh, but just wanted to talk to y'all, man, and congratulate y'all on, on making it to the playoffs and, you know, beating that first team in the playoffs. Um, and now y'all, the, the ultimate goal of, of this from the beginning is to, to win the championship. And um, fortunately, I, I was on the team back in 2008 uh, when we won the Super Bowl in Arizona, I mean, in uh, Tampa when we beat Arizona. And I was on the team last year and we lost to Green Bay. And I tell you what, it ain't no good feeling. It ain't no good feeling to lose the Super Bowl. And right now, we fighting to get back to the Super Bowl. So, you know, you work hard, you come here every day from, from the summer to get where y'all at right now. And I still remember when I was in Little League and, and that's winning the championship, man. You'll never forget that. We still joke about that with all the guys I grew up with around the, the city that I'm from, man. So just go, go on with that and have that thought in mind. Yeah, man, I'm Wesley Chong, just tight end for the Steelers. And just to reiterate what my teammates said, man, just go out there and play hard this week. Because uh, play like it's your last game. It's the playoffs, man, you If you lose, there ain't no next week. Like Marquise said, you know, when he was, when he was in y'all's shoes, they still bragging about they, them winning the championship. That's how big it is. He, he go back home now, and how old are you now? <laughs> 22. 20, how old are you? Oh, man, it's eight. Man, and they still have bragging rights. He's 22 years old, talking about when he won, he was eight years old. Those bragging rights, man, you can never take that away. It's something special, man. So y'all just go out there and whoever in y'all way, pound them. Show. 
I'd like to thank my teammates for coming out this evening, coming out here talking to the Hill Disciples on their playoff run. They got an opportunity to win a championship this year. Uh, we had an opportunity to see my super kick from some of the players out here. Now I want to see your best super kick. You know, send a video, send some pictures. Let me check it out. Maybe I'll do it one day on the field. Oh, you gonna make a talk. Oh, you gonna do it on the Marshall.